Hello. If you're a follower of mine, you'll know that we like our recycling here at Homegrown Veg in the UK. And if we see something that we think we can use in the garden, we pick it up and we try to find a use for it. I've got some stuff out there I want to show you. Tell you what I use it for. And then I want to show you something that I've made. Um, that I don't know if it works just yet. Uh, but I'm hoping it does. And I was spurred on to make that. By all the very strong winds we've been having lately. Um, okay. So let's have a look at these. Rocket sticks. You've seen rocket sticks before. Haven't you? I use these to stake plants in the garden. Just stick them in, tie a delicate plant, obviously get rid of that. Tie a delicate plant to it and it'll support that plant. These are free, they're in the environment. You'll be, if you go around and pick these up you'll be doing a civic duty. Right. Yoghurt pots, come on you've seen these before. You've definitely seen these before. Put some walls in the bottom. You've got a plant pot. Put some walls in the sides. You've got an air pot. Plant pot, air pot, yogurt pots. No, that's going to go out of shot. We'll do these next, then we'll do these. These here uh, used to be part of my grandson's bed many years ago. I think he was four foot four at the time and growing fast. He's now six foot four. But when he was four foot four, he needed a new bed. So I was, uh, I was collared to take that bed to bits and take it to the tip, which I did, but I kept some of these stairs. I thought they'll come in handy, and they have. You might be able to see the dirt on the end. That's where these stairs have been knocked into the ground. Uh, and the winds that have been coming through lately, well, these have saved the day really in some respects because I've, I've, I've put stuff to them and fastened wind breaks to them and just tried to protect the veg as best I could. Uh, so these have really come in handy. Uh, but I found another job for one of these uh, quite recently in the greenhouse. Uh, I'm going to show you that shortly. Let me just uh, get rid of these. Okay, what are we going to do next? We'll get this out the way. This is a piece of aluminium tile edging strip. I'd cut it and I was using this in the greenhouse. Um, but I found that it was too weak for what I wanted it for. Uh, and so I've just replaced it with one of those stairs that I've just threw out of, out of the shot. Uh, it's much stiffer, it's much stronger. This wasn't stiff enough and it wasn't strong enough. Uh, so this has come out and one of those has gone in. Right, let me get rid of that. Can you see these? I'm fairly sure you can. Water buckets. You've seen those before. Cut flower water buckets. I got most of these given. Can you believe it? 10 inches deep, 10 inches across the top, and all 10 litres. Great for growing potatoes in, carrots, beetroot, celery, leeks. I've grown all kinds in these things, all kinds. And all you need to do is drill some holes in the bottom. That's all you need to do. I knew they would come in handy, so we recycle those as well. Right. Come on then. If you've been with me a long time, you'll know what this is. If you've been with me a long time, you'll know what this is. I want to tell you. It's a coffee table leg. Me and Molly found this a long time ago on one of our walks. I think it was on the local seashore. Um, and I thought, hey, that would make an excellent dibber for dibbing a hole to plant something in. If you're going to plant leeks and you want to dib a hole, 
you need a dibber. Push that in, there's your dibber. I've had this a few years. And of course, if you want to dib to an exact depth, you can put a chalk mark on it and dib to about nine inches, make a hole nine inches deep. If you want to go four inches, put a chalk mark on it four inches, go four inches deep. So if you plant anything and you need and you have a planting depth, just mark your dibber, shove it into your depth, and the job's a good one as they say. Pop that over there. You know what these are, don't you? These are those um, mushroom crates. And I found probably two dozen of these a few years ago at our local plastic recycler. In fact, that day, I actually brought more back than I took. <laughs> I brought them all back. And these are excellent for standing things in. Excellent for standing things in. Um, what about these? Elastic bands. The postman just drops these, <laughs> takes them off his parcels and his packages and just drops them at his feet. They're all over the place in the environment. I mean, I've been going for walks lately and just picking these up. They've got to have a use in the garden somewhere, haven't they? All these elastic bands, are they biodegradable? Or are these in the environment forever? I don't know. I just don't know, but I've picked them up and I've brought them home and hopefully we'll find a use for them. Right, let's get rid of those. Right, hey, what about these guys? Let me get these a bit closer to the camera. Hey, these guys were a mystery when I found these. <laughs> I had no idea what they were. No idea. And I found quite a few of them. And I thought, can I use those in the garden? What could I use those for in the garden? Originally I thought about uh, bird scarers, you know, hang them off a line. Um, but anyway, they're not bird scarers and uh, I know what they are now. Do you know what they are? Well, I think they're a cylinder for holding nitrous oxide. I think it's nitrous oxide. I think it's laughing gas. I'm not 100% on this. I think it's nitrous oxide. I think it's laughing gas. They're all empty, by the way. They're, these are empty. There's nothing in any of these. And I think the idea is you fill a balloon with this stuff. How you open it at the top, I've no idea. How you puncture it. You fill a balloon with this stuff and then you breathe it in. And then you talk like Donald. Sorry, which Donald? Donald Duck, of course. Which Donald did you think I meant? Yeah, you talk like Donald Duck. Uh, and I think it's, uh, I think this stuff's legal. I'm not too sure it's illegal to, illegal to breathe in. And I'm fairly sure it doesn't do you any good. Um, but it's sold legally. I've, I've, I've seen it on the internet now. Since I've found these, I've had a look. And, uh, but hey, found a job for a couple of these, would you believe it? I knew they would come in handy. I found a job for a couple of these. Um, and it's a job in the greenhouse and we're going in there in a minute. But before we go in there, I want to tell you about this greenhouse. It's a polycarbonate, eight foot by six foot, lightweight greenhouse. And let me tell you, when they say lightweight, it's... <laughs> It's lightweight, okay. It's as light as a kite, and it'll do what a kite would do if you don't hold it down and button it down. Boy, unbelievable. So I'll tell you about this greenhouse. So I got this greenhouse some time ago. Me and my wife built it. I had a look on YouTube, see if there's anybody on there building these things. I found a guy building it, and I wasn't overly impressed by his attempts. So I read the, the manual and the instructions, and they said, You'll need help to build this greenhouse. Two people's better than one. Uh, and when you've built it, you may want to use some mastic to secure the polycarbonate sheets within the frame of the greenhouse. Right, let me tell you this. You don't need one person to help you. You need half a dozen people to help you. And you need half a dozen people to help you because this greenhouse 
is paper thin, and I mean paper thin. That's a section of the greenhouse. You're probably not getting this very well. That's a section of the greenhouse. I've got to tell you, the paint is thicker than the aluminium. Man alive! So thin. So when you come to build this thing, the strength is in the as-built structure. Once it's built, it's as strong as it's going to be, and that isn't very strong. But while you're building it, it's flapping all over the place. Now the big mistake that I made was that, well, what we really need to do is tighten up these nuts and bolts just a little bit more to stop it flapping all over the place. And then what you find is, when you need to do an adjustment and you come to slacken off these nuts and bolts, because they're aluminium, the thread has picked up, so now it won't slacken off. <laughs> it's gone solid. So you twist and you twist and you twist and then it snaps off. Well that's one bolt down. And you, and you go around and round and there's another bolt gone and another bolt. And you're running out of aluminium bolts because you're snapping the things and you're snapping them because you're over tightening them. Why don't they tell you do not over tighten aluminium nuts and bolts? Why don't they tell you that? They should tell you that. So I've been sending for aluminium nuts and bolts to, to replace the ones that I've snapped off. I've nearly lost the greenhouse in a storm. I've had sheets blowing out. I've had the door blown off. I've got the door secured now using cargo straps. You know the um, elastic cargo straps. I think I've got the door secured. Um, but now the roof vent is wanting to blow open. Now, I've got on the roof vent um, an automatic opener. You know the ones, it has a, a black cylinder on that's got wax in. And as the wax expands with the heat of the sun, it just pushes the roof vent open. And when the sun goes down, the temperature drops. The, uh, the wax goes back to its usual size. And the vent closes. Now, the problem is, on a sunny day, the vent will open, which is what you want. But if it's windy, now the wind gets under the vent and it's trying to twist the vent. And because the, the vent itself is lightweight, lightweight polycarbonate in a lightweight aluminium frame, it's twisting. And it's using the uh, controller, which is secured to the middle of the, uh, the skylight, it's using that as a fulcrum and it's just vibrating and vibrating and then what happens is it vibrates the screws out and you've lost it and it's flapping in the wind and you, oh man. Oh, what a greenhouse this has turned out to be. Anyway, we've got tomatoes in there, we're up and running, we're growing, we're beefing everything up. I've even beefed it up with gold bars and if you're a follower of mine, you'll have seen me do that. And you'll remember that I told you it, it nearly got me arrested. Those gold bars nearly got me arrested. But hey, that's another story. That's another video. It's on the channel somewhere. So, let's go in the greenhouse and have a look at the job that I've done using a couple of these uh, and one of those stairs from my uh, grandson's bed. Come on, let's go into the greenhouse. Let's tidy the garden up first. This is the window in the greenhouse that's been giving me the trouble. This is the window automatic opener. The piece of tile edging, the silver aluminium tile edging that I showed you earlier, was the stair that came across here. Um, but it was too lightweight and the torque being exerted by this window opener was twisting it. So I've replaced that with one of those wooden stairs uh, that I showed you. These here 
of those gas cylinders, those small gas cylinders, I've simply put a nail in to the top, knocked it in and tied it on with some string to each corner of the window and those are going to act as dampers, one on each corner of the window. Now before I installed those, what was actually happening was the sun would come out as it is now and the window would open as it is now um, but it would be windy and when it was windy the corners would use this centre point as a fulcrum and vibrate like that. Both corners would catch the wind and vibrate. And what was happening was in that vibration these screws were slackening or these screws were slackening and on occasion I've come in here and found this hanging off the window because the screws had vibrated out because the wind was doing this uh, to the window, to the skylight. So I've installed these as dampers and I'm hoping these will damp out that vibration stop the wind of vibrating when it's windy and hopefully this isn't going to fall off anymore um, because what happens is if this comes adrift and the window blows open and the wind gets in there's every danger I'm going to lose this greenhouse there's every danger I'm going to lose this greenhouse now I need the window open when it's sunny and it's sunny and it's open but if it's windy there is an inherent danger that this is going to blow wide open I'm going to start losing sheets and maybe even lose my greenhouse um, and yeah I could take this off and do it manually but when it's hot, when it's warm in here this window needs to be open whether it's windy or it's not we need to let the heat out and so I'm hoping these dampers will give this window that rigidity um, that it doesn't have And if the window opens wider, the dampers go with the window. As the window closes, the dampers go with the window. And hopefully that'll work. Uh, but I've only recently installed these. We haven't had that uh, windy day yet. We've had lots of windy days. Uh, but it's not windy today but I'm fairly confident over the next month or so it will get windy it usually does here at home grown veg um, and when it does I'm hoping this works so hey come back to me in a month's time and ask me did this work and I'll tell you the truth I will tell you the truth okay so I hope you've enjoyed this video this is Homegrown Veg, signing out.